Hey there, it's Shannon Mapchick Myers. Today we'll be covering relations as defined on sets. And um, if you're iffy about relations or functions in regular algebra, you may want to review that a bit. If you search my YouTube channel, there are two different areas where they'd be covered. They're covered in intermediate algebra and in pre-calculus one, or it's equivalent to a college algebra class. Okay, so let's get going. This chapter explores relations defined on sets, as I said. The concept of equivalence relation is used in cryptography, and we'll check that out later on in this chapter. So relations on sets, a binary relation is a subset of a Cartesian product of two sets. So here, um, there's an example of the congruence modulo three um, relation. So in example one, we're gonna check out the congruence modulo three relation T. There's an example um, that is a congruence modulo two relation that is in your textbook, the EP textbook in this section. So you can always check that one out as well in your reading. So let's do this one for our first example. So this congruence module three relation T is defined from the integers to the integers as follows. For all integers M and N is, or sorry, M, T, N, right? So For our first example, we have the congruence module three relation T is defined from Z to Z, meaning integers to integers as follows. For all integers M and N, M, T, N, if and only if three divides the difference between M and N, M and N. <laughs> so let's check it out. The thing here that can be a little tricky is you, you wanna get an idea what is M and what is N? So I'll do M and yellow. So all of these right here are the M portions, all right? So it's a little tricky in number five. And then the N portions are gonna be, we'll do those in pink. Oh, sorry, I forgot that one. So these are all in the different examples, the ends, okay? And remember, number five, we'll get to it soon, but it's, it's a, a little tricky. They're trying to trick you there. So get back to here and do this M and then we'll get going. Okay, so is 10 T1, right? So this is our binary relation. So what we need to look at here, one thing to recall is that three divides some number. If you can write that number in terms of three times some integer, okay? So that's what we'll be looking at. Um, I'll do, go a little bit more slowly um, initially and then we'll speed up a bit. So here, m minus n is 10 minus 1. So 10 minus 1 is 9. Good so far? And then 9 can be written as what? 3, which is our divisor, right? Times 3. And so what would we say? Good. We would say yes. Cool, cool? All right. And again, this was our M and the one was our N in this case. And let's also um, have a highlight for our divisor. 
So this is the three that was the divisor. Cool, cool. All right. So next up, why don't you try the next few? Pause the video, try the next few, see how you do. And then I'll work on them and you can check yourself. All right. Good luck. Okay, let's see how you did. So is one T M or one T? Okay, so is one T 10? Well, let's check it out. One minus 10 is negative nine and negative nine equals three times negative three. So yes, cool, cool. And again, here's our divisor, here's our M, and here is our N. Okay, next up, this one it's written differently, so you need to you need to understand you know how to how to visualize it both ways. So is two comma two, right, an element of T. So you just do 2t2, right? And so we're really asking is 2t2. So then 2 minus 2 equals 0, and 0 equals 3 times 0. So again, we have A yes answer. All right. So now, next up, we have um, eight one. So eight minus one is seven. But seven is equal to what? Three times two plus one. So do you see, since we don't have a zero remainder, this would be a no. All right. So now let's look at this other problem. Let's list five integers n. This is why this is tricky because this n is really our m, okay? Because of its placement in the relation. So we're gonna list five integers n such that n t1 exists, okay? So let's, let's check it out, right? We know that we have to have something that is divisible by three. Right, so let's start with something positive that's pretty easy. Um, remember, it's going to be m minus n that we have to do. And don't we already know that if you have a, re a result of zero for that difference, then we get something that works. So let's do that one. Um, so we know that we have... one t one would work right and it would work because why one minus one is zero and zero equals three times zero so this one definitely will work out Cool, cool. All right. Um, so remember, we're just going to make a list of the things that worked out. So in this case, the, what we're interested in is the, the integers that yield a result of yes. Okay, so it'll be a list. Um, all right, so how about another one in the positive? What do you think? Beautiful. I think four... T 
T1 will work out pretty well, right? Because 4 minus 1 is 3, and 3 equals 3 times 1. Cool, cool? So, check, check. And then I'll do the highlighting at the end so you can match everything up. Uh, let's do one more positive, and then let's look at a couple of negative numbers. So the next positive would be what? Awesome, 7t1. That's going to give us 7 minus 1, which is equal to 6, and 6 equals 3 times 2. That checks out. Now on the negative side, our first one, we would want to have a difference result of negative 3, right? So if we had negative 2t1, do you see that that would be negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3, and negative 3 equals 3 times negative 1. So that checks out. And then the next negative would be what? Awesome, negative 5t1. And then we would have negative 5 minus 1, which is negative 6. And ne negative 6 is equal to 3 times negative 2, so that one checks out. So here we go. These were all of our divisors of 3, or 3 being the divisor. And then these were all of our m's, which are quote unquote n's in this problem, right? And then these were the second part of the relation. Groovy? All right, so basically what we've highlighted in yellow would be the answer, okay? So listing the five integers that yield true results for this relation, we would have what? Well, when you're just listing them, they don't have to be in order, right? So I'll just do them in the order we found them. One works, four works, seven works, negative two works, and negative five works. So there is our list. Groovy? All right, so here's our first definition. Let R be a relation from A to B. Define the inverse relation, R inverse, from B to A as follows. R inverse equals the set y comma x, which belongs to the Cartesian product of B and A, so be careful, order matters, such that x and y belongs to, the, the order pair x and y belongs to the relation R. Now operationally, for like proofs and stuff, for all x belongs to A and y belongs to B, the order pair y comma x belongs to the inverse relation if and only if the order pair x and y belongs to R. And remember that this ordered pair is, a, is the result of a Cartesian product. Okay? All right. So, let's do it. For our second example, let it's more of an application. So let A be the set of all strings of A's and B's of length four. Define a relation R on A as follows. For all S and T belonging to A, S, R, T, if and only if, S has the same first two characters as T. So now the, the trickiness is that S is the whole thing that comes before the R and T is the whole thing that comes after the R, all right? Um, so now instead of just uh, one value, you've got four characters on each side. 
So let's check it out again. Um, let's do the second ones. in pink and we'll do the first ones in yellow. And in order for this to work, okay, S has to have the same first two characters as T. So we're gonna look at the first two characters of each and check it out. So, we're gonna look at T and see if S matches. So the first one, we've got A, B as the first two characters, okay, um, of T. And then S has A, B. So this one would be, yes. Cool, cool. And then also note that you know, you, you could still write this as an ordered pair. It would look a little weird, but it would, you know, be equivalent to say, does A, B, A, A, comma, A, B, B, A belong to R, right? Okay, so now on this one, the first two characters are B, B for our T. So S has the first two characters of A, A. So this would be a no. And then here, the first two characters of T for number three are A, A. And the first two characters for S are also A, A. So this one would be a yes. And then First two characters for number four of T are A, B. And first two characters for So for number four, so for number four, the first two characters in T are A, B, and for T it's B, A. So even though they, they would commute to be the same, they're not the same as written. So we would say no, right? And because B, A is not equal to A, B, and this no was because why? A, A is not equal to B, B. Cool, cool? All right, so another definition here is a relation on a set A, and those are the words on a set A, is a relation from A to A. So when a relation R is defined on a set, the arrow diagram of the relation can be modified so that it becomes something called a directed graph. So instead of representing A as two separate sets of points, you can represent A only once and draw an arrow from each point of A to each related point. Okay? Now, here we go. For all points X and 
y. Notice it's not ordered pair, it's points that are in a comma. There is an arrow from x to y if and only if x r y if and only if x y belongs to r. Cool, cool? All right, so if a point is related to itself, a loop is drawn that extends out from the point and goes back to it. So let's look at an example. For example three, we want to draw the directed graphs of the relations defined below. So for number one, we'll just do it all by hand. It's pretty quick. But for number two, um, I wrote that MATLAB code, uh, which we're going to do in the free version of MATLAB, which is Octave. And um, so we'll, we'll check it out momentarily. So number one says, define a relation S on B equal to A, B, C, D by S equal to um, these Cartesian products, A, B, A, C, B, C, and D, D. So let's check it out. Um, first of all, this relation S is on the set B, okay? So the set B um, is kind of like our input, if you will. So we'll have these four points. You can make whatever shape you want. Um, you can do them as curves. You can do them as straight lines, except for if there's something that's a loop. Um, I don't know. I'll just kind of randomly make some points. You can call this one A. You can call this one, sorry, lowercase, lowercase A, because these are the elements in set B. And then this can be C, and this over here can be D. Cool, cool? So these here are from set B. Now, this is, this is where the relation comes in. We've got these ordered pairs, A, B, A, C, B, C, D, D. Cool so far? So, well, you just draw arrows, right? So here we're going from, we'll start with, uh, we'll do them in different colors. So we'll start with A. So A goes to B, right? And A goes to C. So we'll do this one here, A going to B. And then over here, we've got A going to C. Cool, cool? Now, the next one is B going to C, all right? So, B is going to C right here. And then that's the only one that, that has a, this, you know, first element is B, second element is C. So, or second part of the ordered pair is C with the first part of the ordered pair being B. And then D loops to itself, right? So D will start with itself. Oops. We'll start with itself. <laughs> we'll start with itself and end with itself because of the D, D. Kind of cool, huh? All right, so that's a fairly easy example where we were given these, you know, these um, 
or their parents to work with, right? Now, okay, this one, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I started doing this one by hand, and then I realized there was going to be, I think, 81 different relations or something like that that I was going to have to do, all right? So, uh, so, or figure out if they were in there or not. So, what I did is I went ahead and I did and I did this MATLAB code for you. So that's why the movie wasn't posted yesterday. Um, I, when I'm doing this movie, it wasn't posted when I expected to post it because I spent the afternoon figuring out the code. So now, if you've never seen anything about matrices, this might be a little bit above your pay grade, but just kind of go with it. It'll, it'll help you um, with coding in MATLAB. A lot of the coding in MATLAB deals with uh, matrices, okay? So let's check it out, all right? So right here, I am defining these all as matrices, all right? The first command, so each line is a separate command, all right? And you'll see that in, you'll see that in uh, when we do the code. This line here, the first line has a making a matrix, or you could think of this as a row vector, okay? So a row vector, and this row vector has, goes from zero to eight, the integers, okay? So it's this row vector written as a matrix, so this is how it, it is, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, this matrices go rows by columns, okay? So this has one row. So this is a 1 by 9 matrix. By the way, the corresponding vector, and I'll just do this once, would be an n tuple, and you'd have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm sure, like I said earlier, this is not going to be the only way to code this. Uh, this is just, this is just to, this is just to, um, <laughs> uh, the way I could figure it out, I could think about it at the time. So that's the first line. The second line, remember, we are squaring these things, right? I'll do a different color. We're squaring these things, right? Uh, we're, we're, so I basically made this matrix um, for my X values here, and I'm going to be squaring those X values, right? So, and that, I see that from here. So, when you do this command, you name a matrix C, right? And so I'm saying it's gonna be the matrix A. And when you do a dot, right, before you do your raise to a power thing, it's going to square each of the elements in the matrix. So, this matrix C is going to be equal to the square of each of these. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, etc. I'm 
until you get to eight squared. And this will all print out in your MATLAB uh, code. Um, I'm just kind of going through step by step. Okay, so, but then what's gonna happen is we need to get the difference, right, between each of these. So we, we're gonna start, if you listed them all out, right, you'd have to do, you'd start with what? You'd start with, say, zero is zero V zero. That's what you'd be asking yourself, right? And what you would do is you would say, oh, well, zero squared minus zero squared equals zero. And then you would say zero equals five times zero. And so then, because we're looking at it divisibility by five, and so then you would say, yes, that would be part of it, right? But I don't think you wanna do that each time because the zero has to go through nine times, then the one has to go through nine times, and then the, all the way down to eight. So that's why I was saying, you're gonna have all of these operations you have to do, so we're gonna use technology, all right? But because of this, we need to have matrices that are all that number squared, right? So when I did, did this matrix here, okay, M0 equals zeros, one to nine, well, zero squared equals zero, so the matrix M0 ends up just being two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements, which are all zeros. And same with the ones, right? So the ones will be M1 equals one squared is one, right? So you're gonna end up with nine ones. Now those are special because we deal with zeros and ones and codings, right? So there's a special way. This one, one comma nine tells us we want a, a matrix that has all zeros, right? That has dimension one by nine. And we did the same for ones. Um, but when it comes down to it, next up, we want two squared in each one, three squared in each one. So for our next one, I just used the fact that a scalar times a matrix is the matrix of the scalar times each entry or element in the matrix. So M2 ends up being equal to two squared times M1, right? The matrix M1, which will give us all fours. nine fours. Cool so far? So that's the idea behind these. And so we would go all the way down, okay, till we got to our M8. And the M8, of course, would be what? M8 would equal to, beautiful, all 64s. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cool, cool. Let me work on that one, make them close. Okay, so, and by the way, that's how you enter a matrix into MATLAB. You put brackets around the whole matrix, okay? Semicolons between the, col the different um, columns, right? I'm sorry, semicolons between the different rows. And then you do spaces between all of our row entries. All right, so now I needed the difference between each of those M matrices, right? Minus the C matrix, because the C matrix squares each of the individual elements. So I basically, named that one C, all right? So that ends up giving us 
the the x squared minus the y squared stuff okay so our our so here i should actually take that out of that color the this this uh this one here is going to represent so right here these x's are all of the m i matrices okay because the x's are each individual element but we wanted a whole matrix of them now the y squared is our c matrix and so we made our c matrix um, in the pink there and so what we want is the difference between um, these two and then we're going to need to see if they're divisible by five <laughs> all right so here we go we have um so end of the day i'll just do one at random and i call these v matrices so at the end of the day what did we get we had um find a different color here we had uh these v matrices i'll do i guess i'll do v5 right so v5 ends up being equal to the matrix so what would happen is you would take the difference, right, of all of these, the, the one that's all fives, right, which all 25s rather, because it would, the five would be squared. And then we'd be subtract, subtracting from each entry or element of C. So you'd have 25 minus zero for the first one. Then you'd have 25 minus four for the second element of that matrix. And then Oh, sorry, 25 minus 1. And then 25 minus 4. 25 minus 9. 25 minus 16. 25 minus 25. 25 minus 36. And a couple more, 25 minus 49. And then 25 minus 64. Cool so far? All right. So, and then of course it would be simplified, right? You'd end up with 25, 24, 21. Uh, what is this gonna be? I can't even think. 21, uh, 15 minus nine is six, so you'd have 16. Um, you would have nine, you would have zero, we would have negative nine, right? Negative 11, I guess. Negative 11, here we would have negative 24. And then here we would have negative 39. Cool, cool. And notice that the ones that are divisible by five, right? are what this one here the first element the this element here and that's that's it for that one if i did the computations right okay so those would be the only ones that would work from that particular matrix all right so now we go to and then those we would have you know nine of those matrices <laughs> so this is how to make one happy matrix so this is what i was saying these semicolons right here they mean that you're doing a new row so what's going to happen is this matrix v is going to be of size nine by nine right and it's going to have all of the V's, right? So the M's and the C and the A were just a means to get to here, right? Those were a means to an end. So now we're gonna have a nine by nine matrix 
that consists of all of these vectors. So this is the way to get them where they're each a separate row, right? That's the way I wanted them. Now, notice our mod, right? So I named this last matrix, I named V mod, okay? So that's not a command, that's just the name of the matrix. Now, this is, this command here basically says, if an element of the matrix is divisible by five, then the output is one. Otherwise, the output is zero. And to me, this was the most elegant way to do it. There's other ways to code. I looked at all these other ways to code. And in this particular situation, I thought it was the most elegant. Okay. So what at the end of the day, we'll get a matrix that's all zeros and ones. And the ones are where we had a success, meaning that that will be in our directed graph. Okay. Because remember, <laughs> that's what we're doing. <laughs> All right, so anyway, let's, uh, let's do it. So here we are in um, Octave. You can actually access it from my website under, our line under Linear Algebra or Math 270. And my site is mathchick.net, M-A-T-H-C-H-I-C-K dot net. Um, but this is what the code, I just copied and pasted it from the handout. Um, this is what it looks like once it's coded. So you can see, you know, what's a what's a, an active command and how things look different. Okay, so I just did it all in one happy thing this time since I figured it all out for you already. <laughs> and, um, and so now I'll uh, go ahead and hit return. And I had done some of the things for you in here. Okay, so this one, um, what, what Octave does is, here's where I entered my code. So it's calling it Octave 2. I don't know where Octave 1 is, sorry. But it's saying Octave 2. And you can, you can delete out the command line names. They're not important when, when you're sharing code. Uh, you can actually just copy it into a Word document, works the best, um, or like some other, you know, text type thing. Um, so uh, anyway, this is all the, this is what I entered in. So it shows you what you entered in. Then it shows you each command line output. So notice the how the matrices are coming out. Normally they would, you know, when you're writing them, they'd have brackets around them. Um, but we have all of these one by nine row matrices, or you could think of them as vectors. And then the outputs of the um, difference of the two squares, right, um, for each one. And then you end up with the V matrix. And the V matrix, if you take a look, where all of the things that are divisible by five, okay? So here, that the last command, right? Um, so here, where if you take a look and you see where the zero is in V, the very first entry, so the entry in the first row, first column, is zero. And notice now there's a one here, right? And that's because the one means that zero is divisible by five. So if we go to the right more and you go see negative 25 in the first row six um, column, you see negative 25. So first row six column in the V mod matrix, you'll see a one. 
So that's what all that means. And so now um, all you need to do is go and figure out how to do your directed graph, okay? So well, let's head back over to the handout and we'll check it out, all right? Okay, so here we have our matrix, okay? And so remember, wherever there is a one, it means we had divisibility by five. And wherever there is a zero, it means that the difference of the squares was not. So here, just so you, you know, can kind of think about what we had um, for our, we had zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and this is so you know what the order pair is that where you have success, okay? So we're gonna kind of build on this matrix that we got, all right? Which by the way, you know, um, on the computer it comes out like this, but typically you would have brackets around it like this, but we're gonna be utilizing it. I'll just show you what it would have looked like. It wouldn't have had any of the black writing. It would have just had this blue writing and you would have gotten that, okay? But we'll leave that off for now. And so where there's success, I'll highlight in this green where there's success, right? We have success in all these ones. And remember how we'd only gotten two successes, right? In the M5, you can see that there. But um, there we go. And notice along the main diagonal here, we have all successes and that's where each square, uh, the, the square of each of the numbers were the same, so we got a result of zero in the difference. Okay, but just going on so we can see them more easily, we end up with all of these successes, all right? So, Let's list them, all right? Let's, let's list out our successes. So basically, what we found out is our, our, set, um, our set V, because remember, our set A was the individuals, and our set V are gonna be all the ordered pairs that work. So V equals, the ordered pair is zero, zero, okay? So I'm gonna go across. So I just wrote down zero, zero. We have the ordered pair zero, five. And then we have one, one. And then we have one, four, and one, six. And then for the twos, we've got two, two, and two, three. And then we have two, seven, and two, eight. And then for the threes, we have three, two, and three, three. and three, seven, and three, eight. And then for the fours, we've got four, one, four, four, and four, five. For the fives, we have five, zero, and five, five. For the sixes, we have six, one, and six, four, and six, six. And 
And then for the sevens, we have seven, two, seven, three, seven, seven, and eight. And then for the eights, we have eight, two, eight, three. And then eight, seven and eight, eight. Cool, cool, actually. So this is our, our set of ordered pairs. So then <laughs> we just need to make our line graph. So we're gonna have um, points zero through eight and then we'll draw lines at how they're related, okay? So this one will be a little bit messier, right, than the, the one before, but um, it's okay, all right. So I'll go ahead and do our, our inputs and our inputs member we had, I'll do, I'll go kind of circular, I think this time. So zero as circular as I can be <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's not bad. All right. And then like before, I'll do different colors depending on which input is first. All right. You don't have to, but just for the, just for ease of showing, we'll do that. So remember we had zero, zero, right? I don't know if I like, so we had zero, zero. We had zero, five. We had one, one. So now I'll start a new color. We had one, four. We had one, six. And then now we're on the twos. So the twos we've got, we'll do, I don't know, I guess we can do this blue here right now, so two, two. So remember, they all loop to themselves. Whoops. And then we had two, three, so I'll do a little bit of a loop. We had two, seven. We had, um, to eight, and then now we're on the threes. So the threes are three, three, two, and then it loops to itself, and then we have three, seven. And we have three, eight. All right, now we're on the fours. <laughs> so the fours we will have, um, we have four, one, four, four, and four, five. So four, one. And that's interesting, right? Do you see that it goes over the other line, right? Because one, four was one of our ordered pairs. Um, our second one, what we'll do is right here, four, four. And then we had four, five. Okay. 
Next up, we have the five. So we will have um, five zero. And notice again, zero five, right? Was there was a line from zero to five. So that might be something to put in your brain. Five, five. And then we had, um, that's it. So six. We've got six, one. And again, we've got something that went the other way as well. We have um, six, four and six, six. And then all right next up seven two and remember two seven was related seven three And looks like three seven was related. And then um, seven seven and seven eight. All right. And then uh, for our eights, we've got what? For our eights, we've got eight two. And again, two, eight, we had drawn a line. And we have eight, three. And look at that. We had drawn a line from three to eight. And then we have um, eight, seven. And we had drawn from seven to eight, right? And then we have our eight, eight. Groovy? So we're done. <laughs> and I'm sure there's probably a way we can do the direct to graph on MATLAB, but I didn't have time to figure that out and get the video done today. So um, anyway, I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you're watching this show. And if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and tell your friends. Bye.